Hi everyone, I'm WABC Chief Meteorologist Lee Goldberg and this is Wake Up Weather for ABC 7 and Y and for Weather or Not, sponsored by TD Bank. Thanks for joining us. Well, we have some showers that are showing up during the overnight that could bleed into the morning commute and while it won't be a widespread deluge, I am a little concerned about a few localized downpours to slow down your travel on Wednesday morning. And that would probably go into late morning and then things would start to improve during the day. So while we're just talking about widely scattered showers, Hours during this overnight as we go through the morning hours. Just be on guard for more numerous showers. Make sure you're checking in with your radar and checking in with Brittany Bell and Sam Champion on Eyewitness News in the morning. After that goes away, the storms would be spotty in the afternoon hours on Wednesday, and we'll look more closely at that with an analysis of the future cast. Heat is coming in to start August. The dog days get going right away with temperatures in the 90s Thursday and Friday. There is a new wrinkle and a new little uncertainty that has come up with the Thursday forecast that I'll share with you in just a moment. In the tropics, we continue to watch that large tropical wave over the tropical Atlantic east of the Lesser Antilles. It is still forecast for development, maybe a tropical depression before they get to the weekend over the Bahamas or as it closes in on the southeast coast of the United States toward the weekend. A lot of things to figure out about that and we'll discuss that as well. Getting into the overall trend during the overnight with the scattered showers. Again, I don't think we're talking about widespread downpours. But it's a little disturbance of the jet stream that's rotating through and the air is very moist. We could definitely have some downpours and some areas of localized ponding into the Wednesday morning time frame. This still is a leftover shower, mainly north of New York City through late morning and then clouds should break for some sunshine. There's still some support for a widely scattered shower storm in the afternoon hours, but a lot of us will go through the afternoon dry. Probably once again, a better chance north and west of seeing a shower storm pop up in an isolated variety, but there also may be one down over over the Jersey Shore as well. As we go into Wednesday evening, we'll clear things out for a while. And then later at night, this is where there are some questions. There is another what we call short wave or impulse in the jet stream that's going through the Ohio Valley into the Great Lakes. And that is slated to get close on Thursday morning, or at least a piece of it. So our fresh future cast is indicating showers and even some thunder showers, kind of waves of them going through at any time on Thursday, still allowing our temperatures to get close to that 90 degree mark, probably feeling like low and mid 90s with the humidity. Now that's a difference from some of the discussions we've had over the past couple of days, where a little bit of dry air is going to try to come in, maybe even knock down the dew points north and west of New York City. This would argue against that, but I want to show you a couple of other solutions that I think a little bit more realistic. One is our European model, which takes that disturbance out of the Ohio Valley and kind of breaks it up into pieces. And while I can't rule out a spot storm in the afternoon, the majority of the activity would stay along and west of the Appalachians. Even look at our American model and it's sort of in the middle of what we're talking about. It's not indicating anything active on Thursday morning, unlike our short term traditional future cast. And then you can see a couple scattered storms that try to again and during the afternoon hours, which is I think a little bit more believable in this scenario. So I think we're going to be hot. We're also going to be hazy. I'll tell you why in just a moment. And then there might be a scattered storm that pops up, but I don't think we're going through waves of storms during the day. So I'll still forecast a high in the low 90s for the first day of August. A front is on top of us on Friday or just to our north. We've got the humidity spiking again. There might be an afternoon storm around. And then comes the weekend, which is not a great forecast because there is a front nearby. It's slow to get off the coast. And if I were to look at the weekend and say, okay, what's the best time to get outside? Maybe make your beach plans. It's probably going to be Saturday during the day through about maybe mid afternoon and then some scattered storms can start to pop up and this front looks like it would make us more active with showers and storms Saturday night and then the front is kind of slow to exit. So maybe we're able to see just showers and storms bleed into Sunday morning, then the afternoon gets better. In a worst case, it's kind of a storm threat off and on through the day on Sunday. So that would leave us with the first part of Saturday as the best part of the weekend. It's still several days out, but that's at least our initial thinking. I talked about hazy skies on Thursday, and the reason is the smoke from the Canadian wildfires, which is very thick over the northern Rockies and the high plains, but a piece of it has definitely come into the Great Lakes, and some of that is going to spill eastward as it rises the jet stream, and I think it will be noticeable in our skies on Thursday. 
Tuesday. If we get some patches in between cloud cover, which I anticipate we will, you'll notice more hazy skies. And it's a decent amount, so I think it will be perceived as hazy. And the other thing is maybe a little bit of that smoke can get weaved down to the ground and decrease our air quality or deteriorate our air quality a little bit. So it could be borderline moderate, maybe unhealthy for sensitive groups. So be aware of that through the latter part of the week. We always like to go beyond the seven day and whether or not and you can see that as we go through the second week of August, our temperatures are still slated to be above normal. But one thing I'm noticing is the below normal signal across the upper lakes and into northern New England. That just means that we're probably getting some good westerlies up here, which is something we like to see in terms of the tropical season, because if we have more organized westerlies coming down, maybe troughs occasionally in the northeast dips in the jet stream, that would provide some protection from us from tropical systems. And that's very important once I get into our tropical discussion in just a moment. Looking at the overall temperature trend, it's definitely a hot signal early and above normal temperatures through the 6th of August and then kind of up and down around normal as we go through the second week. And that's why you got that signal where it wasn't as above normal as we saw it to start the month. In terms of precipitation, no clear signal mean and really near to slightly above normal as we go through the 6th, the 12th of August. Rain chances in the short term, we've got our storms predominantly Wednesday morning, spotty in the afternoon. The chance has come up a little bit on Thursday, but it's still not all that high. Afternoon threat on Friday afternoon and at night threat on Saturday and unfortunately that Saturday Sunday chance has definitely increased. So just favoring the idea of unsubtle weather staying in the forecast on Sunday. And are these precipitation chances climbing because it's reacting to this potential tropical system on the southeast coast? Let's get into that. The overall tropical wave, a large wave of low pressure, it still hasn't shown tremendous amounts of development. As I look at it in this recording, starting to see a little bit more thunder activity around that wave of low pressure that's east of the Lesser Antilles. So maybe there's some interaction with a tropical wave and some formation trying to happen. The Hurricane Center is still saying, listen, there's really no formation over the next 48 hours. It's really after that, a few days out, where we have a 60% shot of this seeing some development, maybe getting into a tropical depression. If it's a name storm, it's Debbie. And if you look at the overall development zone and the suggestion of where a track might go, it would be Bahamas, some moisture certainly getting into Florida, close call, maybe some development along the southeast coast. So obviously we're concerned about that. What does that mean for our forecast? When you look at the overall spin, and this is just one on the European model, you can see it trying to come together on Friday and then working over the Bahamas, a close call with Florida, certainly some, no matter what, Florida looks like it's gonna get some moisture and tropical rains over the weekend and then some type of motion toward the southeast coast into early next week. But remember, I talked to you about the protection we're seeing with some of these jet stream westerlies coming in, and that would at least argue for a better chance of either a recurve of a system it, if it forms, some type of deflection out in the Atlantic, and in a worst case, maybe there's some interaction with that moisture with a front that may be coming through the area. So could we still get some tropical rains from it? Yes, not out of the question, but it's unlikely in this pattern that you'd see a storm be able to come right up into the the Northeast. Again, very early on, uh, a lot of speculation here because the storm hasn't even formed, but that's at least our initial thinking given the weather pattern that's going to evolve into next week. Seven in the morning on your Wednesday. Muggy, there are some scattered showers around. There are a few heavier thunder showers that could be around, although I think they're isolated. Watch out for some localized flooding in your morning travel. After those morning showers, clouds will break for some sunshine, and then there's still a chance of a pop-up storm in the afternoon and into the early evening hours. We'll go with 86 for a high. Morning showers, a few of those could be heavy. Clouds give way to sunshine, and then humid and a spotty thunderstorm in the afternoon hours. Air quality will be moderate. Paul and count on the medium side, and the UV index will be at an 8. Sea and sand, south wind 10 to 50, not as gusty as we saw on Tuesday. We had some gusts 25 to 30, but still a little breezy. The waves 3 to 5 feet, and the water temperatures upper 60s to mid 70s. The upper 60s are like Montauk, and also there's still been some upwelling near Atlantic City. So parts of the southern Jersey Shore seeing temperatures a little chillier. Rip current risk will once again be on the high side, so just be aware of that and check with lifeguards when you head to the beaches. Tomorrow night, 74. There's a stray thunder shower around. Otherwise, we should clear out for a while, become partly cloudy, and 
muggy. Now again, Thursday is not the highest confidence forecast because we have to see whether that thunderstorm chance is legitimate. Right now I'm going to play it as hot and hazy with more of a chance of a storm that could pop up in the afternoon hours rather than waves throughout the day. So we'll still go with a 91 for the first day of August. Steamy on Friday with an afternoon storm, 91. Saturday could start out okay with clouds and sunshine, but we're likely to get more active afternoon and into Saturday night. And unfortunately, if this front stalls over the area, we may be in and out of sh showers and thunderstorms on Sunday, at least to start the day. Maybe we have a chance to dry it out in the afternoon. Right now, the front can get through on Monday. We're warm and maybe not as humid, but this Monday, Tuesday forecast is all going to be dependent upon that track of the potential tropical system along the southeast coast. Because what happens is, is if something does form down the coast, it would tend to slow down any fronts that are trying to exit our area early next week. That would delay any drop in humidity and could also at least introduce some cloud cover, if not some tropical showers in here. So we'll watch that very closely for you. Your seven day accurate forecast. It's always on ABC 7 and Y 24 7. Thanks for listening to Whether or Not. We'll see you next time. Rain or shine.